Welcome back to Happen to Fly. I'm your host, Carson. Uh, the weather over here is really strange in central Pennsylvania. We have not got any snow at all. The only thing we've been getting is rain, and it's already January. It's 2022 already. Uh, the water levels are up. Creeks and everything are not usually what they are. But one fly in particular has been working over here that has been successful in getting those fish in the net. And that's the zebra midge. And that's what we're going to be tying today. Join us. So the fly that has been working for us over here, which is not really a secret, is the zebra midge. This fly is simple and it works. That's that's what I like. It's simple and it works. You can crank these flies out so quickly when you start practicing tying these flies. So again, this is a zebra midge. Just to quickly, just to go over what we're going to be using uh, for this fly. Um, we're going to be using a 70 aught ultra thread black thread. It's already in my bobbin. That's what we're going to be using for thread. Um, also, just to keep in mind too, you can use different colors. Another color that I like for this zebra midge is a brown olive uh, thread ultra Ultra Thread, 70 yacht. Um, usually when I'm tying zebra midges, I like to keep it to uh, keep it at 7 knot thread. Um, I don't want too thick of a thread. Um, I want this fly to be thin and cut through that water really quick to get to this fish. Um, also, I like to use uh, red. Um, still, Ultra Thread, 70 yacht. Works really well on uh, imitating uh, both midges and worms if you use the right size uh, of hook. Uh, the hook I'm going to be using, talking about hooks, uh, we're going to be using a size 16 competition barbless scud slash pupa. Um, this is what it is. Boop, boop, boop. And uh, uh, this fly, um, you can tie it in the size 16s, 14s, and size 20 and lower, or size 22s, just to match that hatch, if you know what I mean. Um, the size bead I'm going to be using is uh, a 2.8 millimeter bead. Uh, the 2.8 is kind of heavy for the fly uh, due to because of um, our water um, current is pretty high and uh, due to all the rain and the weird weather that we're getting in central Pennsylvania. But um, just to, for a normal bead size, I'd probably use a 2.4 to a 2.0. Um, the 2.0 I usually use in really thin water or shallow water, but the 2.8 I'm going to stick to, but you can use any bead size you want. Um, that's the cool thing about fly tying. Make anything you want. You can create anything you want. So, let's get right to it. Um, I think I talked enough about what we're going to be using. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you this fly, that uh, the zebra mage that I already tied um, on, on the vise already, just to show you what we're going to be tying. And... Uh, Let's just get right to it. Let's get going. Alrighty, so this is going to be the zebra midge that we're going to be tying today. Again, really simple fly. Um, you might have seen this fly online or anything else like that. But uh, yeah, this is really simple fly. Really simple, and that's why I like it. You can crank this out really quick, and man, do the fish love them. Alright, to get started off, you're going to have to put your bead on with your hook. There we go. So, there we go. Alright. So, to get started off here, I'm going to take my 70 out thread. There we go. And uh, what we're going to simply do is just going to make a couple wraps right behind the bead. So, right now, we're just going to be focusing on just trying to secure the bead. Also, really quick too, scissors, always have your casing on, never have it off. Um, always want to keep your scissors sharp. Boop. There we go. Tag is off. Cut your tag. Just tie on here. I'm just gonna make a couple wraps right there. And uh, yeah, okay, let's get to our next step here. So our next step is that we're gonna get some thin ultra wire here. And uh, we're just gonna tie it on right where we uh, cinched down or uh, tied our tag or uh, thread base here. Also talking about wire really quick. Um, I always like it to have the wire closer toward me because when you wrap over, it's going to move the wire more toward the back or the spine of the fly. So I really like to have my thread not like toward me or all wrapped around when you tie on your thread. I just like to have it straight right behind the back of the hook. I'll show you what I mean. So right now what we're going to do, I'm going to hold my thread or my wire really tight just right here and I'm just going to wrap my thread 
all the way until the point or where you desire, but I'm gonna tie or wrap my thread all the way until like the bend of the hook there. Um, yeah, so that's basically your body. This is your body. And uh, this is basically what the body of the fly is gonna look like. So the next step, really simple. I'm gonna wrap my thread all the way back, still creating the body. And I'll tie all the way to the point of the bead right here, just right behind the bead again. All right, so now we have our thread. I mean, my, I keep messing up with thread and wire. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have our wire here, and uh, it's gonna be all the way to the back or the bend of the hook. That's where we're gonna start wrapping our thread. So what I like to do uh, is um, like to tie my thread or wrap my thread around my hook with an even spaced wire. Um, I don't like to have my thread just all over the or my wire all over the place when I wrap it. I show what I mean. Um, Basically, you're gonna get your wire here, and we're just gonna simply just wrap our wire in a right toward you, away from you first, and then we're gonna start wrapping our thread. So then we're gonna just start wrapping here, wrapping and wrapping. All right. So until this point, I hope you see this, is that we have an evenly spaced wire gap here. You don't want to have it where you're just going to just do it, everything you want and just wrap your thread just like this. It, your fly is not going to really look that good. Um, you might catch a fish that way, but it's not naturally what the fly is supposed to look like. So we're going to wrap our wire back where we were. But um, to evenly space them out, it just takes practice. But um, also, too, you can use your vise to spin the vise around to do that. I just personally just like using my hands. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap, wrap evenly around. Just be patient, take your time. Quality over quantity. That's how I like it. All right, so now you get to the point where you're wrapped all the way to the back of the bead or right behind the bead where your thread is. And that's where the point is why, why your thread is there is to thread off your wire and cut off your wire. I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. Um, definitely, just quick tip, never use your scissors, your fly tying scissors to cut off the wire. That's going to dull your scissors like crazy. So I'm going to just going to show you really quick how to do that. But first, let's uh, tie off our wire. So I'm simply just going to get my thread and just wrap right behind this wire here. Since it's down that wire, make sure it's good. I like to make like about, I don't know, it depends um, for the, how big your collar wants to be on this fly, but I like to make about five to six wraps. So now what we're gonna do is that we are going to, uh, how do you get rid of the wire, right? So I'm not gonna use these scissors. You can use like a different type of scissors also, like these ones, but um, I personally don't do that. Uh, a quick way to do it is to, um, Actually, grab your wire, make sure you have a decent sized wire that you can wrap your hands around and twist the wire off. Just like with lead, um, like lead wire, just with this. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab this, go on a circle motion, there you go. There is a nice cutoff for your wire and it won't mess up with your thread, it won't cut your thread off, where if you make it a whip finish and it breaks off, it won't do that at all. Um, only thing I like to do too is to make a couple more wraps here and there you go. That's that's how you get your wire off. It's so simple. Um, I've always been using like a, like back then in the olden days I used to use these old type of scissors that uh, I'm not using anymore or just use just for uh, really dull crafts or anything else like that and just cut off that wire. I used to do that but I don't do that anymore. I just twist it off. And uh, that's the fastest way of doing it. So, just a whip finish. Get your whip finisher. Wrap around here. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. And the only thing that's the last step is just to snip off that thread. Boom. There you go. There is your fly that's going to be working for you in winter conditions. I personally like this in winter conditions. 
But also too, don't forget to use this in the summer and spring. This midge that we tied right here lives throughout year round and that's why this fly is so effective. So thank you for watching this video on hyping the fly, this fly tying demo. I really hope this fly works for you. It's been working for me lately and uh, yeah, this fly is a killer. It's simple. Man, you can tie a whole bunch of varieties of this fly and man, do they work. Um, a couple of tips and tricks just to use this fly just really quick that I use or when I use it. Um, in the winter time, I just like to dead drift it, urine if it. But um, in coming up in the uh, springtime or in the summertime, I like to uh, what you call is swinging, swinging the fly. Uh, if you're at the end of your drift, what I like to do is just lift the fly until it slowly comes up in the water column, and eventually, actually, it's out of the water. Um, but fish have been hammering this fly. Uh, if you use that in the summer, it works so well. Um, too, but also in the winter. If some, if nothing's working in the winter for you, this fly is gonna go to. And uh, yeah, this been fly has been working for me years, and uh, I really hope this fly works for you. And I really hope you like this fly tying, uh, this fly tying demo. If you really like this video, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I catch you on the flip side, you guys. See you later. Tight lines and stay fishy.